All right, people, I hope you are having a wonderful day. Um, we're going to take a look at vertical motion today. Vertical motion is a type of projectile motion where the initial horizontal velocity is zero. You can pause it and read through all that background if you need to. What we need to focus on here is my general function. It's going to start like this, 1 half a times t squared plus v times 0 t plus h 0. So what I need to tell you, a is going to be acceleration. V sub zero is going to be your initial velocity. V E L O C I T Y. H sub zero is your initial height. So where we're starting from. If there is no initial velocity, or if you're dropping an object, it's always going to be zero at the initial height. It tells you where it is. Um, for your A, you're either going to use negative 9.8 if it's meters per second or 32 if it is feet per second. So make sure you keep that square. Um, you're definitely going to need a calculator today. You're going to need to keep things straight. I'm going to skip over some things as far as typing the calculator because I already typed it out to try to make this video go a little smoother. And we go from there. Um, some extra help. A big thing you need to know is to find the x coordinate or how long it is taking to do something. To find the x coordinate of the vertex, so how long it's gonna be until it's at the maximum, it's gonna be x equals negative b over two a. To find the y coordinate, so how high it's gonna go, you're always going to plug in the x. So what you need to know, if I kinda of look at this, if I have an object that's either thrown or dropped, that's kinda of what our graph is going to look like. That right there is gonna be your vertex. Your y value is always your height, and your x value is always your time. So keep that in mind when I'm talking to things, and we'll kind of look at it. So a pitcher throws out the first pitch, the batter swings and hits the ball directly straight upwards with a speed of negative, or sorry, of 96 feet per second. The height of the ball as a function of time can be modeled with the function below. So it already gives you the function, which is nice. So just so you kind of see it, it's in feet per second, so that is your acceleration. That right there is your initial velocity. And that right there is your initial height. So how far it started, the speed of the pitch is 96 feet per second. The height of the ball is at six feet. So question, what we're gonna look for, we're gonna simplify this first. I'm gonna go ahead and multiply the one half. You can get into that habit, so negative 16x squared plus 96x plus six would be the equation I'm going to use here. Just multiplied it out. So A, how long will it take for the ball to reach its maximum height? So I want to know the vertex, the middle. So T is equal to negative B over 2A. So I have negative 96 over 2 times negative 16. So negative 96 over negative 32. And that's going to be 3 seconds. We always want to label this because it's a word problem. So after 3 seconds, the ball will reach its maximum height. You can put that in a complete sentence. Look at the notes that are completely filled out as well. And everything will be in complete sentences for you. Let's go over to B. What is the highest point that that ball will hit? So three seconds is how long it takes to reach it. So I'm going to plug in three. So F of three is my notation. So I'm going to go ahead and plug in three. So negative 16, wherever there's an X, I'm going to plug in a three. If it helps, I'll do this really quick. Um, the only reason it's plugged in right here with the F is a notation. All I'm really concerned about is over here. So negative 16 times nine is negative 144. 96 times three is 288 plus six. So when you add all that together, you get 150 feet. So after three seconds, the ball is gonna reach 150 feet, which is gonna be the maximum height the ball reaches. Think about that logically with a baseball, that's about right. So now, when will the ball hit the ground? So you have three options here. One, you can factor it. Two, you can use the quadratic formula. Or three, you can complete the square. With this one, if you're factoring, it's gotta be a positive number. These numbers are usually pretty big. So with three terms, most of the time, I'm just gonna go ahead and jump to the quadratic formula 
it's gonna be very large numbers, so it's gonna take some organization, but I think we can do it. So if I'm looking here, remember my A is negative 16, my B is 96, and my C is six. So X equals negative B, so negative 96, plus or minus the square root, B squared minus four times A times C, and all of that's gonna be over to A, 16. So when I simplify, I got negative 96 plus my square root. I'm gonna type all of that in and you get 2400. All of that is over negative 32. So x is equal to negative 96 plus or minus the square root. Nope, I don't need to do that part. I'm gonna type in the square root of 240, which is roughly 48.99. All of that is over 16. So from here, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do negative 96 plus 48.99 over 16, and then I'm gonna do negative 96 minus 48.99 over 16, and see what I get. So when I do the plus, I get 6.062 seconds. When I do the minus, I get negative 0 0.062 seconds. Now, if you think logically, we cannot have a negative time, so this is gonna be my answer here. So the ball will land on the ground after 6.062 seconds. A lot of work to get my solution, but that's what we're doing in this section. Make sure your answer makes sense. If a baseball's hit, does it take about six seconds to the ground? Yeah, that's logical, so we're good to go. So that is number one. If you need to pause, think about that for a second before you go on to number two, please do it, take your time. Um, other than that, I'm gonna jump over to number two, walk you through a couple more. So here I have a soccer ball that is gonna be kicked from the ground. So ground level, that tells me my h sub zero is gonna be zero, my initial height will be zero, with initial velocity, so v sub zero is 32, and we're talking feet per second. So what I know here is f of x, my problem, before I even get there, I'm gonna go ahead, I'll write it above it. So f of x is gonna equal one half, I'm talking feet per second, so that gets a negative 32. T squared or X squared, we'll do an X, keep it easy. Um, plus my initial velocity is 32 X, plus my initial height is zero. So the equation I'm gonna use is negative 16 X squared plus 32 X. So that is what I'm going to use in this case. So for A, what is the maximum height? So X equals negative B over 2A. So negative 32 over 2 times negative 16. So I get negative 32 over negative 32. So that's just going to give me one second. So after one second, that ball is going to be at its maximum height. How many seconds? It doesn't ask for how far or how high that's going to be. So we're good to go. So let's jump down, that was B that I guess caught, cut off, but you would plug in one to the equation that would give you that, how high it's gonna be after one second. So how, after how many seconds will it hit the ground? So my equation here is negative 16x squared plus 32x is equal to zero. So now I'm gonna factor this. It's got two terms, it's very easy to factor with two terms. So what is my GCF? I have 16 and 32, so I'm gonna take out a negative 16. I can also take out an X. With these, we always wanna make our A positive, so we're always gonna take out a negative number if my A term was already negative. So that's gonna leave just an X here. If I take a negative 16 out of 32, that leaves me with a negative 16 left over. Sorry, it doesn't, I'm dividing, so it's gonna be a negative two. So set each part equal to zero. So x equals zero and x equals two. So after how many seconds? So this is my starting spot. So that's not gonna be my answer. That at, when x is zero seconds, that's when the soccer ball leaves the ground after being kicked. When x equals two, that's when it falls back down and lands. So that is when it's gonna hit the ground. So my answer here is gonna be after two seconds, which makes sense because after one second, it's at its peak. After two seconds, it's going to hit the ground again. So same thing, if you need time, pause that and let's go watch it. So the last one, 
Example three, an object is launched 19.6 meters per second. So I'm gonna use the other one this time. <clears throat> Excuse me. From a 58.8 .8 meter tall platform. So let's write an equation here. So my original equation to start with, h of t, f of x, it doesn't matter. One half um, is meters, so negative 9.8 t squared. My initial velocity, it's gonna be at 19.6 meters per second, so I'm gonna put a variable there, and then I'm gonna launch it from a 58.8 .8 meter platform. So my equation here, if I simplify that, that's gonna be negative 4.9 t squared plus 19.6 t plus 58.8, .8. and that's the equation I'm going to be working with. All right, so when will the object reach its maximum height? So t is going to equal time negative b over 2a, so negative 19.6 over 2 times negative 4.9, which is negative 19.6 over negative 9.8. So that's going to be 2 seconds. So it's going to reach its maximum height after 2 seconds. So there's a prize for getting the object to hit the roof of the building next door. If that roof is 85 feet, can I do it? So let's find the maximum height. If the maximum height is over 85 feet, yes, we can get a prize. If it is not, then we can't. So what we're gonna do is plug in two. So h of two is gonna equal negative 4.9 two squared plus 19.6 two plus 58.8. So when I do that, negative 4.9 times two squared, I get negative 19.6 plus 19.6 times two, you get 39.2 plus 50, whoops, 8.8. .8. So h of two is going to be 78.4 meters. So will I be able to get this prize? You will not be able to land your object on the roof because the roof is higher than the maximum height of your object. So, sorry, no prize for us. All right, lastly, how long will it take for the object to hit the ground? So here's where I want to take my equation. So zero equals negative 4.9 t squared plus 19.6 t plus 58.8. .8. And I want to factor it, complete the square or quadratic formula. I have decimals and I have a negative a. Heck with it, I'm just going to do my quadratic formula. So a is negative 4.9, b is 19.6, C is 58.8. .8. These numbers are going to get very big, so take your time. So X equals negative B, plus or minus the square root, B squared minus four times A times C, and all of that's gonna be over two A. So when I simplify it, I have negative 19.6, plus or minus the square root. Please excuse the interruption. Sorry for that interruption. All right, so what we get when we get here, x is equal to, well, I guess I started with t, but I changed it to x, negative 19.6 plus or minus 39.2. All of that is over negative 9.8. So once again, I got my two options. So negative 19.6 plus 39.2 over negative 9.8. And then I got negative 19.6 minus 39.2 over negative 9.8. So when I type this in the calculator, I got negative two. This is six. Remember, we cannot have negative answers. So after six seconds, the object will hit the ground. So I understand this is a lot of material, some big numbers. If you gotta pause it, watch it a couple of times, please do. Projectile motions take a lot of time, especially with the quadratic formula and knowing when to use what. Use this as a great guideline for how to find your object's height and how to find the time it gets to the height and how do you find the actual height and then using the quadratic formula. But I zoom back in here on my general function to end that. So you get one half a times t squared plus v sub zero t plus h sub zero and it tells you what to use there. So take that and use it. All right, it didn't like when I switched back to the app. So 
Um, there is another sheet of paper on your notes that is the quadratic keywords. So take a look at that. I'm gonna to try to finish that on another slide and see how it exports. But if it doesn't, take a look at that. And if you got questions, let me know. Other than that, I hope you have a wonderful rest of the day. All right, so this is the other sheet, the quadratic keywords, just so you can kind of get a hang on things. Um, so you know what I'm talking about. So a quadratic is gonna give me a parabola. So the y-intercept is where it's gonna cross the y-axis. It is how high off the ground the object started. Um, your zeros are down at the bottom. The left one gets thrown out because it's negative. You cannot have a negative time. Remember the x-axis is time, the y-axis is height. When it's at the positive, that tells me two things. It says, when does the object hit the ground? It also tells me how long the object was in the air. At the vertex up at the top, in the top middle, the x value is when is the object at its maximum height. The y value is how high does the object get. And you also got how high does the object after blank seconds when you plug it into the equation. So that's just kind of a helpful thing that will help you out. Um, use this, hope it helps. Good luck with these. They take a little while to get used to, so please don't panic. Just take your time. Have a good day.